So as I said this morning, we're going to go through and we're going to talk about the platform itself, uh, kind of what it is, what it does. Uh, like I said, we've been we've been talking about this a lot recently. You 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 hear it a lot um, uh, when you when you're searching on the web, uh, when you're talking to folks at Dassault, you see it uh, a lot in 3D experience world, right? Uh, especially with the rebranding there, uh, but. One example that I wanted to kind of throw out there, because when we when we really start looking at the platform, um, users kind of come back to that that basic side of this and say, well, we talk about the platform and we talk it in such, about it in such general terms that what is it and what does it mean for me? So the platform concept itself uh, isn't new. There's a lot of platforms that are already out there. There's a lot of platforms that we probably use uh, on a day to day basis. And the first one that I'm going to use as an example is Google, uh, but another really good example is going to be uh, Microsoft 365 uh, is, is a platform. If you think about Microsoft a couple of years back, uh, a lot of you bought Microsoft Office, right? And, and now with 365, you buy the individual pieces of the office that you plan to use. You don't pay for access if you're not going to use access. You don't pay for Visio if you're not going to if you're not going to use Visio. You buy the individual apps, uh, licenses, and roles that correspond with the type of work that you want to do. Uh, in my example for Google, uh, I'm going to I'm going to take this from uh, a personal standpoint, and that is, there there are a few apps on Google that I use kind of on a day to day, and and I, I've taken a half a dozen of them here, and they work from my personal email to storing photos, docs, uh, my calendar that I share with my family, uh, as well as you know, file sharings uh, with the drive. Um, so these are six specific apps or specific roles, if you will. Um, but what not a lot of people realize is that if you look at the, the actual Google platform, uh, and I'm just gonna shift forward here. Uh, if you look at the actual Google platform, their platform has over 270 different apps or different roles on the platform. Uh, and all of these represent something coming together. Uh, again, I personally don't use probably 90% of these, uh, but they all work in that same structure in that same, uh, in that same ecosystem, if you will, as they come together. The platform isn't that much different when, it, when, you, when we look at it from, from that way. So for example, um, there's several different brands that we, we currently run from. Uh, Innovia is kind of the core brand uh, when we talk about the platform and it provides us with the, uh, the typical PLM type, uh, type of functionality. So it's gonna be your revision control, it's going to be your uh, file storage when it comes to SOLIDWORKS files and checking in and checking out. Um, you have the Delmia side, which is our machining and manufacturing side, the Simulia. Uh, I, I hope, I hope, I sure hope that you guys have seen some of the Simulia stuff that we've done in the past. If not, we have a day in the Innovate 3D series that's gonna talk just about Simulia uh, and some of the capabilities that Simulia has to offer from the, uh, from the finite element side. Uh, but again, all of these coming together on a single platform, um, working from the ground up. So the 3D experience platform is the first one, unlike Google, unlike uh, Microsoft, that has interconnected apps that are gonna work off of a single data set, allowing you for your design, simulation, manufacturing, planning, um, all working off that single source of truth. Um, so when we typically, typically when we go to implement uh, the platform, we're gonna implement the CAD first. We don't always do it, but most of the time it's CAD first because it's that single source of truth and that that CAD data is a lot of times what we base a lot of the other features and functionality off of. Um, so there's a couple of different flavors. Uh, we're going to talk today about uh, the cloud version. Uh, so we'll be talking about 3D experience on the cloud. Um, if you're not looking for cloud, if if you're looking for uh, ITAR compliance, there are different flavors of this that will allow, let us uh, achieve those needs. Um, but for the most part, uh, the cloud side of this has taken off. Um, 
and allows us to to offer uh, a a secured a secured area on the on the Dassault cloud for all of your uh, your CAD files and allows you to work independently of any specific CAD CAD well CAD, CAD platform or any specific um, piece of software. So we're all browser based. Uh, we're going to run right out of out of the, uh, any uh, any CAD browser that would normally support HTML. Um, so some of the benefits of being on the cloud the the cloud platform. The first one, um, when we normally when we talk about PDM or PLM. Uh, one of the first things we start talking about is infrastructure. Uh, what is the required infrastructure in order to get the system up and running? Um, understand that, that that infrastructure is generally supplied by the client. Um, it could still be cloud-based, could be VM-based, uh, but the infrastructure that we're talking about is, is Dassault's infrastructure, and therefore they keep it up. So for companies that, that don't want to maintain their own server in infrastructure, or they want to replicate globally, um, whether that be just in the U.S. or globally, um, the 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 cloud platform is a really good option for you uh, because all of that replication, all that server work's done in the background. The data itself is secured by by DS on their cloud, um, and you can see there's two sections here that we have a couple of white papers coming out uh, within the next probably couple of months here that we'll talk about. Uh, the infrastructure that is built on. Uh, we'll also talk about the data security policies that go into the cloud. Um, from a CAD standpoint, um, the cloud takes its updates every six weeks automatically. And the users are, are given fair warning when, when the update weekend is coming. But this eliminates the need for, uh, for the IT group at your company to do server side updates. So you get all your updates basically for free. Dassault is gonna keep the cloud up to date. Um, this connects from anywhere. Uh, this became really important last year uh, when, when companies started sending their users home, right? Um, and that was uh, the ability to connect from literally anywhere, uh, no VPN required. So it's gonna go, go through a secure internet transmission. Uh, with no VPN directly to the Dassault server, um, and I can work as if I were in the office. Um, scalable in both feature and size. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of different apps that associate with this uh, for different functions, whether that be from the, from the engineering side, manufacturing side, um, project management, um, but you don't have to start out big. You can start off just with your CAD data and add those features and functions like building blocks as, as your, your business needs grow. Um, that's from a feature standpoint. From a size standpoint, uh, because Dassault is taking care of the servers, as you add users, you just literally add users, invite them to your platform, um, and the, the scale for the infrastructure required for them to, to connect to the platform uh, is automatically scaled. You don't have to worry about that at all. So where does it start? Well, I'm going to I'm going to push forward one more slide here into the the platform login. Um so it it's built on the Dassault Passport system. We're going to connect directly to their server. Uh it's it's built on and supports industry standards for security including uh multi-factor uh and push notifications. Uh generally this can be done with like a uh Google Authenticator or um Duo is another big one for iOS, I believe, if you're using iOS. Again, there's no VPN required uh, in order to be inside that network. Uh, you just need to connect through the through the web. Um, and it, it's available on any device using a current web browser. When we talk about that real quick, um, realize that when I say any device using a, a current web browser, uh, I mean, I use Chrome. It doesn't have to be Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox. Those are fair game. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be on your computer either. This can be coming from, um, this can be coming from a tablet, 
It can be coming from a, a cell phone, although on the cell phone, there is an app for it. So you're, you're probably better off using the, the cell phone app. Um, but literally any, any web browser uh, is available to connect to the, to the platform itself. So let's go ahead and log in. Actually, I'm going to go through one more quick slide, and then we'll we'll log in, and, and I'll show you both of these slides. So the dashboarding portion of this, when I log into my browser, is going to give me uh, the the start point for me to access data on the network or on the platform. So it's going to give me all of the tools that I need, allows me to redesign and I don't want to call it redesign, rearrange the tools in a fashion that works for me and allows me to save that layout and assign it to everybody. So from a from an admin standpoint, I can kind of give all of my users that single starting point so that they can work from that single dashboard. In our case, I'm just going to log us in um, and I'm going to slide this over here and I'm just going to hit my cloud and it's going to bring me to my Dassault login. It remembered my my user. I just need to here. Hopefully, I remember my password. So, in our case, we're using Chrome. Um, this is kind of that first landing page. I'll maximize that and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to the dashboard list so I can create as many dashboards as I want. I want you to think of dashboards is almost like the home screen on your cell phone where you can move widgets around, you can move icons around, get what you need uh, out of that, that dashboard. I'm going to go to what I call the, in this case, I like to, to dashboard by project. So in this case, I'm going to go to my spreader project and it's going to load the dashboard for me. When I look at this, uh, I want you to notice across the top, there's a section here that allows for tabs. Now these tabs, I generally arrange by the function or role that the, that the tab is gonna play. So notice I have one just for CAD. This is the, the area that I typically search for and interrogate CAD models. Uh, I have one for change, so that's, that's where I go when, I, when I'm gonna go ahead and make changes to something. In our case, if I just grab my recent um, my recent CAD file here, I'm just going to double click on this to open it. And what you're going to see is the individual widgets or the tools. So these are these windows. This one has a couple of different widgets. And you can see they kind of work together. Uh, each one knows what the other's doing and, and they kind of update. They can cross highlight between the two. But I can literally jump in here uh, without a CAD license and interrogate the model. This is the, the, the structure that was built by SOLIDWORKS when I checked it in. And you can kind of see in this row here exactly where this data is coming from. So it originated in SOLIDWORKS, that's the master. So all of this, this data is coming directly from the SOLIDWORKS check-in. And because I'm working on, on the platform, if I right-click, I'll get options to open this back into SOLIDWORKS. Uh, I'm not gonna do that quite yet. I'm gonna actually come back uh, because I want to talk a little bit about search. Now, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to come back to the search box. And I'm actually going to search, that was the 4240 spreader. I'm just going to ch change my search criteria, criteria, and I'm just going to search for spreader. When I do so, the system's going to find a whole bunch of data out there, okay? Generally, when I come to a new user and I sit and they're looking for something, I generally tell them, I want you to cast a really big net and then use the six W tags to, to filter down. The six W tags are over here on the left hand side. It's this, this panel off to the side. And this is where I'm going to come back and start telling it that the data that you've retrieved, well, maybe I only want to see the assemblies associated with that. And so when I click on that, it's going to first show me all of the assemblies at the top. And you can see I can quickly filter down through the data. Um, I can come down and say, you know, I, in this case, I have a couple of different people here. Um, one of the other filters that I really like is I, a lot of times I'll get users that will ask, um, I want to search for something, but I want to know the top level. Where do I find the top level item 
in my in my structure. Well, in this case, I've searched for spreader. And if I go to content structure, notice that root, there's only one. So it's found the root node already. If I select that, there is my, my assembly or one of my assemblies in this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just drag and drop this. I'm gonna drag it from the search results and back into that product structure. And you can see it's just drag and drop will open that up for me. So here's my new spreader or one version of it. Uh, again, I can see the entire content underneath it. In this case, I have a couple of different spreaders kind of loaded in the same file. Uh, I must've been playing with this earlier. Uh, but it allows me to quickly jump to and from uh, the items that I'm looking for. Uh, in our case, I'm gonna take this bottom one and we'll just open this up in SOLIDWORKS. So I'm just right clicking and saying open, open in SOLIDWORKS. Now I'm coming from the browser and I've told it that I want to hit this in SOLIDWORKS. I'm using a normal desktop version of SOLIDWORKS. And what we're gonna see here is that, well, so the splash screen for SOLIDWORKS is on, is on the other screen. I'll bring it over as soon as SOLIDWORKS comes all the way up. Um, is that the system is going to go out and find all of the items associated with this. It's gonna cache them locally onto my machine and it's gonna open that file inside of SOLIDWORKS for me. So in this case, I did a right click open. Uh, a lot of times I like to work inside of SOLIDWORKS in a fashion where I have SOLIDWORKS on one screen and the web open on another and I'll drag and drop between the two. So drag and drop from the browser directly into SOLIDWORKS is fair game as well. We'll let SOLIDWORKS, my machine is not a rocket, so bear with me. Come back to my, my web for a second, and we're just gonna bring that, that 4240 back up. And while this is loading inside of SOLIDWORKS, oh, see, about the time that I, that I try to move back, that's when it wants to load up. So it's gone ahead and basically cached all of the parts required. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it rebuild on the SOLIDWORKS side. And from inside of SOLIDWORKS, this is what I'm, I'm going to see for my PLM side. And you can see it's going gonna, it's gonna to show me the entire structure uh, as I would expect inside of SOLIDWORKS. Cross highlighting is fair game. I get all of the, those, those features and functions that I'm used to inside of my SOLIDWORKS. Um, and I can work as a CAD user, I can work inside of this as I normally would. Um, what's actually really cool about this is that this is, this is my session, but at the same time, I can come back and I'm just going to say, show me a pin. And I'm just using this as an example. And you can see that same powerful search engine that I had on the outside. I have it inside of SOLIDWORKS as well. And if there's a pin that I'm looking for specifically, in this case, I'm just going to drag and drop, uh, drag and drop from those search results. Uh, it will uh, automatically add this to my SOLIDWORKS file. So it's added it. I just don't know where it added it to. There it is. This is my, my aging SOLIDWORKS skills. So drag and drop from any search dialog box allows me to basically cache the file from, from the platform uh, onto my local machine and it automatically does an insert. So I have full control over and I can search for anything that I want from the platform and add it to my assembly here. All right, let's come back and we're gonna talk about platform search. I'm going to flip back to my PowerPoint here. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the six W tags, the drag and drop, and the support of the widgets. Um, 
you can see the filtered search results here. So I can start filtering the search results and adding pie charts and bar charts uh, based on what on the on the filtered results that I'm that I'm getting back from the system. Realize that all of this search data is built on an index in the background. Uh, so the results of searches are very fast within the system and um, can be customized to add the fields that I'm looking for. So a lot of us have added custom properties to our SOLIDWORKS files. Um, we can capture those custom properties, bring them across into the system and search for them by index here uh, and filter out on even those, those custom attributes that we've added to the system. I'm going to speed up a little bit because I want to make sure that I get that I cover this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about CAD integrations. And you can see some of the CAD integrations that are currently supported in the out of the box version. Um, so we, we can fully support uh, all of your, uh, your AutoCAD, your DWG, DXF, um, a lot of different uh, 3D formats. Um, and what is really different and, and is a real differentiator here is that this one is gonna tell me that this is a SOLIDWORKS part but I also have the capability to come back. I know I have a fishing rod in Inventor. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that I wanna look at a, at a product again. My bad. So I'm gonna say product. So here's a fishing rod. And I'm gonna drag and drop this into that same product structure editor. And you'll notice that this one is coming from, from Inventor. So inside of the system, uh, the, the CAD data that you see uh, is neutral. And we can deal with SOLIDWORKS data, Inventor data. Um, we have a couple of customers that, that deal with a combination of both CATIA and SOLIDWORKS. Um, and this kind of goes to that, that whole premise that no one, no one anymore typically has just one CAD system. They, they're they're often, often dealing with a legacy or they're often dealing with CAD uh, that was used by a, a division that they bought out. Um, so all of that data can be housed here in a single source of truth. Um, and we can create structures that mixes and matches this data. Now, when you go to edit that data, uh, it'll be edited in, edited in its native application. So if, for example, if I wanted to add to edit the rod assembly, it's going to edit inside of Inventor. Um, but again, I can mix and match those structures between the two, so I can I can uh, put them together, and you can kind of see the preview of them together here. Let's talk a little bit about enterprise change. So, the the change and the enterprise change within the platform. Uh, is is built on almost like a building block. So we generally start out with change actions, and this is is the the core of any change process that we set up for a customer. Um, and then, if you require a higher level of change, so if you have an engineering review board, if you want to be able to add requests for change from people outside of the organization or people on the manufacturing side. Um, we can we can take that change process and expand it to meet the needs of the company. So it's it's very uh, it's very much an option to pick and choose how how deep you go into this change process uh, to get these things set up. Uh, 